Imagine a world without death. A world where the finality of life is no longer a looming shadow, but a mere transition to another state of existence. No goodbyes, no funerals, just endless possibilities and eternal connections with those we love. Just a seamless transition from your physical body to a digital paradise. Imagine your consciousness, your very essence, being preserved in a realm where you can continue to grow, learn, and experience. Sounds like science fiction, right? A concept straight out of the pages of a futuristic novel or the scenes of a high-tech movie. Well, the idea of uploading your consciousness, your memories, thoughts, even your personality into a computer is inching closer to reality. Scientists and technologists are making strides in understanding the human brain and replicating its functions digitally. It's a mind-blowing concept full of tantalizing possibilities and terrifying unknowns. The potential to live forever in a digital utopia is both exhilarating and daunting. For centuries, humans have grappled with their mortality. We build monuments, we write stories, we create legacies in an attempt to defy the inevitable end. We search for the fountain of youth. We explore every possible avenue to extend our lives to hold on to the precious moments just a little longer. But what if the secret to immortality isn't in some mythical spring, but in the circuits and algorithms of our own creation? What if the key to eternal life lies within the digital realm we are building? What if we could cheat death by uploading our essence into a digital afterlife? A place where we can continue to exist, interact, and evolve. The possibility of living forever, of preserving our minds long after our bodies have turned to dust, is a powerful motivator. It drives innovation and fuels our imagination. But as with any great leap forward, we must proceed with caution. The ethical implications, the potential risks, and the unforeseen consequences must be carefully considered. Before we hit the upload button, we need to ask ourselves some tough questions. Are we ready to embrace this new form of existence? What are the potential pitfalls? What does it truly mean to be human? Is it our physical form, our thoughts, our emotions, or something more intangible? And are we ready to hand over the keys to our consciousness to a machine? The journey to digital immortality is just beginning, and the questions we face are as profound as the possibilities. The human brain is the most complex structure in the known universe. It's a marvel of biological engineering, a labyrinth of neurons and synapses that work in perfect harmony to create thoughts, memories, and emotions. It's a tangled web of billions of neurons, each one connected to thousands of others, forming an intricate network that processes information at incredible speeds. These neurons communicate by firing electrical and chemical signals at lightning speed, creating a symphony of activity that underlies every thought, feeling, and action. To upload a mind, we need to create a digital replica of this intricate network, capturing every nuance and detail of its structure and function. This is a monumental task, one that makes mapping the entire internet look like child's play. The complexity of the human brain far surpasses any digital network we have ever created. But here's the exciting part, we're making progress. Advances in neuroscience and technology are bringing us closer to understanding and replicating the brain's intricate workings. Companies like Elon Musk's Neuralink are at the forefront of this revolution, developing brain-computer interfaces BCIs, that can read and interpret neural activity with increasing precision. These BCIs, implanted directly into the brain, hold the potential to revolutionize prosthetics, allowing individuals to control artificial limbs with their thoughts. They could also offer new treatments for neurological disorders providing hope for millions, and yes, maybe even one day upload our minds. Imagine a future where our consciousness can be transferred to a digital medium, preserving our thoughts and memories indefinitely. Imagine a future where you can control your computer with your thoughts, seamlessly interacting with technology in ways we can only dream of today, or download information directly into your brain, matrix style. The possibilities are endless, limited only by our imagination and technological prowess. BCIs are still in their infancy, but they represent a crucial step towards bridging the gap between our biological brains and the digital realm. The journey is just beginning, and the potential is vast. However, even if we perfect the technology, we need to remember that the brain is more than just a collection of electrical impulses. It's a dynamic, ever-changing organ shaped by our experiences, our emotions, and the world around us. It's a dynamic, ever-changing organ shaped by our experiences, our emotions, and the world around us. Every moment of our lives leaves an imprint on our brain, making us who we are. 
Can a digital copy ever truly capture the essence of what it means to be human? This question remains at the heart of our quest to bridge the gap between thought and transistor, challenging us to consider the true nature of consciousness and identity. Let's say we manage to map every neuron and synapse in the human brain. Imagine the complexity of such a task, the sheer volume of data, and the intricate connections that need to be understood and replicated. We create a perfect digital replica, a digital twin capable of thinking, feeling, and remembering just like the original. This digital twin would not just be a static model, but a dynamic entity, evolving and adapting over time. Have we successfully uploaded a mind? Or have we simply created a very sophisticated copy? The distinction is crucial and yet incredibly elusive. See, consciousness is a slippery concept. It's not just about processing information, it's about experiencing it. The subjective quality of experiences, often referred to as qualia, is what makes consciousness so enigmatic. We don't even fully understand how it arises from the biological mush of our brains. Despite advances in neuroscience, the hard problem of consciousness how and why we have subjective experiences, remains unsolved. Some scientists believe it's an emergent property of complex systems, arising naturally when a system reaches a certain level of complexity, while others argue that it requires something more, a spark of something beyond our current understanding of physics. This, something more, could be a new fundamental property of the universe, yet to be discovered. Think of it this way, if you copy a piece of software, you have two identical copies, both functioning the same way. The code runs the same algorithms, processes the same data, and produces the same outputs. But if you copy a mind, is the copy truly conscious? Does it have its own subjective experiences or is it merely simulating them? Does it experience the world in the same way as the original? Can it feel joy, sorrow, pain, and pleasure? Or is it just mimicking these states? Or is it just a digital zombie, mimicking human behavior without true self-awareness? This question challenges our very understanding of what it means to be conscious. These aren't just philosophical questions, they touch on the core of our identity and existence. They have huge implications for the ethical and legal status of uploaded minds. If we grant them rights, what kind of rights should they have? If we deny them, are we committing a moral wrong? If a digital copy isn't truly conscious, is it ethical to create it in the first place? Are we playing God, creating entities that can suffer without any real purpose? And if it is conscious, what rights and protections does it deserve? Should it be treated as a human? with all the rights and responsibilities that come with it. These questions are not just theoretical, they are pressing issues that we must address as we move forward in the age of digital minds. The idea of uploading our minds opens up a Pandora's box of ethical dilemmas. Let's say you upload your consciousness into a digital world. Is that digital version of you still you? Does it have the same rights and freedoms as your biological self? What happens if someone hacks into the system and alters your digital mind? Is that identity theft or something far more sinister? And who owns the rights to your digital consciousness? You? The company that created the technology? The government? Imagine a world where your digital self could be copied, deleted, or even held hostage for ransom. The legal and ethical frameworks we have in place are woefully inadequate for this brave new world. We need to start thinking now about the implications of digital consciousness and develop safeguards to protect the rights and freedoms of both our physical and digital selves. The idea of a digital afterlife is alluring. But we need to make sure that in our quest for immortality we don't accidentally create a dystopian future where our minds are no longer our own. 